There are some assumptions that we have to take here first. First of all, you need high quality material. Second, you need high quality clinicians that can restore properly the case. Third, high quality technicians that could do, make the job done, produce and maintain. And fourth, preferably high quality patients. You don't get to choose if you have a high quality patient or not. Because usually in our studies, we don't include what we call supermen and superwomen. We include consecutively all the patients that come and seek treatment. We don't include just the non-smokers or the non-broxers or the non-systemically compromised. We include everyone. What about marginal bone loss? Well, besides the excellent result in marginal bone loss after one year, what was interesting was to observe that cases of bimaxillary rehabilitation actually had an average marginal bone loss which was lower than the single arch rehabilitations. So maybe there is something here working on shock absorbing that may influence this. Of course, my conclusion is empirical, rather clinical. But we'll have the follow-up to check that. In our study, we started with a positive correlation, statistically significant, despite not that strong, but yes. The higher the plaque, the higher the bleeding. But at one year, the plaque levels increased. Well, this is something that we are used to see because on the first evaluation, the patients are on their toes. New prosthesis, new rehabilitation. Everything is perfect. But slowly, they move down to their routine oral hygiene habits over the time. But bleeding levels were the same, and there was no correlation. So maybe... Something is preventing here the inflammation. I'm not going to take that conclusion straight away, but the fact that the peak cylinder is placed right in contact with the mucosa, it's not innocent. So this is the illustration of what we had in the first six months and what we had at one year. So you can see plaque without doing anything, but the bleeding levels don't match the same score. In summary, with an absence of correlation between plaque and bleeding, low marginal bone resorption, low incidence of complications, and an absence of that correlation between plaque and bleeding, this, in my opinion, translates into a good prognosis for the long term. But of course, that more follow-up is needed. And yes, this message is also still accurate because my faith didn't change since last year. For me, peak may be maybe the next periodontal ligament. <laughs>